In this video, we'll be looking at the new dual pan device inside of Bitwig Studio, and we'll also talk a bit about pan law. This is a video where you definitely want to be listening back on your studio setup with your monitors. You'll be able to hear most of these concepts in headphones, but it only really starts to make sense when you have your monitor set up. Um, so that's just a bit of a word of advice at the start. So let's begin by talking about how Bitwig handles panning in more of the generic sense. So we have a stereo file, and this is purely theoretical. On the far right, we have rain, and on the far left, we have this vocal stutter. So there's no overlap whatsoever between these two channels. And what will happen then is if I turn this to the right, what we're really doing is we're just turning up the rain and we're turning down the vocal stutter. This vocal stutter is not coming to the right at all. It's just staying on the left and it's getting quieter. So we can listen to that here. And the same is true if we go to the left. One thing also worth noting here at the very beginning is watch the peak when this is playing back normally. Minus 5.4. And then watch what happens if we put this out to the far right. The peak jumps there to minus 1.1. And this is going to uh, come back in just a little while. So if we wanted control over these independently of one another, in the past, what we would have to do is a little bit of like creative work. So what I would do is I would duplicate this out. I would take one of these and I would push it to like the far right, take the other one, push it to the far left. And now we would hear that we have the same thing playing back, but it's going to be much louder. It's going to be peaking out because no dual pan is being, or excuse me, no pan law is in effect now. It's really as if we just have those two files in isolation and they're playing back on their own. And we'll see then that the peak is going to be at minus one. And you can see that like so. So it's a little bit like frustrating, but it's still fine. We could adjust these volumes together if we were to, you know, go in here and bring the gain down on both of them and we would be fine. We're keeping the same balance, whatever. But there is an issue. If I wanted to take the rain and I wanted to pan it, I really wouldn't be able to do that. All I can do is turn it down because it's still just existing on one channel. Right? It just gets louder or quieter. So what I would have to do, and to be honest, I've only ever done this one time in all my time working with Bitwig Studio, is I'd have to use a tool device. And I'd actually have to begin by monoing both of these out. Okay, so bring the width down. I bring the width down here. We'll now hear that we are in the center. But now I do have control over the panning. So we can go back to where we started from. Or we can cross these over. And that's pretty much what the dual pan allows you to do. Although in this setup, we could actually process the left from the right separately. And remember, you're never going to have a stereo file like this where there's something that hard left and something that hard right that are two completely different sounds. But this is just for the sake of example. I do have then trim controls. I could add, you know, an EQ to the left versus to the right and all that sort of stuff, right? No problem at all. The dual pan is going to allow us to maneuver the left and the right independently in the stereo field, but we don't get a trim control on that. So let me just go in here and let's grab the dual pan. We're going to bring this back to where it started from. And so now we've brought the dual pan in and we'll be able to listen to this example where I can take that vocal stutter and I can move it over into the right side or put it dead center. But the one thing I don't have are trim controls. And the other thing that gets very interesting is that now, because there is an overlap occurring, you'll hear that when I go and take the main pan, uh, pan pot for the channel, that if we go far right, we are still going to get some of that vocal stutter because it's now sharing something. You know, there is that overlap occurring, and this is just easier heard than said. So we still get a little bit of that in there. And now, depending on where we position this, we can make it louder 
or quieter. If I go to the left, it's going to get quieter. Less crossover. If I go to the right, it's going to get louder. Okay. So pretty straightforward. That's the basics with the dual pan. And so you have to really be thinking about both of these in conjunction at the same time. Okay, how am I going to move the main pan pot as compared to how am I going to position these things in the stereo field? Um, and when you have something like really wide guitars, you'll realize that, oh my gosh, I can pretty much hit all the spots when I work with these in conjunction. Pan law is one of those concepts that's so much easier heard than it is explained. It's very difficult to explain in like layman's terms. But basically, perceptually, when your speakers are sharing the load and playing back down the middle, if there was no pan law applied, the signal would sound so much louder in the center than it would on the sides is basically the idea. And so we can illustrate this by automating the pan pot from left to right here. All right, and the idea is, as long as you're listening back on your main speakers, what you want it to sound like is the same amplitude all the way across. You don't want it to sound a lot quieter in the center. You don't want it to sound a lot louder in the center because the idea is you could apply all of that later on. You could go in and automate the volume if you wanted to get that kind of a depth effect. But that's the general idea with pan law is that depending on how you set it, your goal is to get it so that it sounds absolutely perfect like the amplitude is not per you're not perceiving it as being any louder or quieter but in order for that to happen it actually does have to turn the file down when it gets in the center so let's just watch and see what happens here with our meters So you can see that we peak out at approximately minus 6.4 when we're on the far left. And then when we're in the center, we're peaking out roughly around like minus 10.4. That is telling us our pan law is set to approximately 4. Now, I do believe Bitwig works on a hybrid principle. And the way I know that is if I go in here, and let's delete this for a second. We'll come back to it in just a minute. If I go and I put all of the power in the pan onto one side and I bounce it, Okay, let's solo this out real quick. And what I want to do is, okay, so this is at minus 20.6. What's going to happen when we use a tool device and we bring that down to the center? We just saw that we basically had like a minus four difference before. If I go in here and I bring this down to the center, we're now going to have the speakers, both speakers trying to output this, but it's beginning all in one. So again, we're at like minus 20.6, minus 20.5. And instead, we're at minus 26.5. So that's exactly 6 dB. And that would be following like a linear pan law. And so if you had an absolutely perfect studio, your speakers were absolutely calibrated correctly, when you're listening and you're doing a pan effect from left to right, it should sound equal amplitude all the way throughout. But rarely does that happen because there is no such thing as like a perfect studio. I guess there is one guy who claims that that's the pan law he uses. Normally you use something that's bumped up a little bit. So like a minus 4.5 or like a minus uh, three is oftentimes something that people use. But remember that in terms of like adjusting your mix, pan law makes absolutely no difference because you are compensating for that appropriately. If you have a pan law that's way out of whack and you're mixing the song, it just means that when you have stereo files, you'll be turning things down further to compensate and keep your center image really pushing through. But let's go and look at what the pan law does, because this is usually the way that you can really kind of hammer this point home for people to understand what's going on. And then we'll compare the pan laws between the um, equal gain and then the hybrid. And I do believe that this program is using a hybrid because we just saw that we got two different results with pan law, one where it was like minus six, one where it was like minus uh, 4.5 or something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's bounce this now. It will bounce it post fader. And once we bring this up, oh, whoops, sorry, guys, I made a mistake. I need to bring this back to zero. 
zero, not nine. Once we bounce this out, we will see what's going on. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. So you can see that we do have like this sloping occurring, but to your ear, it should sound consistent all the way through. That's kind of like the perfect pan law, uh, depending on your setup, but we don't get control over that inside of Bitwig. So let's go in and do a little bit of like a compare and contrast. All right, so now we can compare the pan laws inside of the dual pan. So what I've done here is I've actually gone and I've automated from left to right, both L and R following the same trajectory. So since this is a mono file to begin with, it's going to be panning from left to right here for us. Okay, so let's listen to what it sounds like with hybrid. And we can listen to what it sounds like with equal gain. All right, so let's check out equal gain on the bounce. And then we'll check out hybrid on the bounce. So let me just rename this so I know. Equal gain pan law. And then this is our hybrid pan law. All right, so we can now come in here and do a quick comparison between the hybrid and the equal gain, remembering that this is what happens when we just use our main pan pot. Okay, so with hybrid, what do we start out with on our peak? Roughly minus 4.7. Where are we at when we get to the middle? It looks like it gets down to minus 10.3. All right, let's compare that with the equal gain. Again, minus 4.7 is our high, oh, whoops, sorry, I was on the wrong one. Minus 4.8 is our high point, and right in the middle, we get all the way down there, you can see it, to minus 11. So this pan law would be closer to, again, like a 6, maybe. Well, not really, it's, it's much less than that, it's in the 4 region. And again, maybe this one is like 3.5, that's just for reference. And then with our main pan, what we get is something closer to the hybrid approach. All right, minus 4.7. In the middle here, we're actually at a minus nine. So it's changing for all of them, which is very interesting. Cool, so the one that actually has the like highest value in terms of pan law would be what we do with our main turn. So that's more in like, let's say the three range, the hybrid is more in the four range and the equal gain is more in the five range. That's not perfect. But the point is in Bitwig, you don't really have to worry about it too much. You can use whatever you want and then you can always compensate for it. So let's say that you select equal gain and you do a panning effect. You're doing something where you're moving something from left to right and you notice that in the center, it kind of ducks away a little bit and it gets too quiet when it's crossing over. You could first of all go in and change the mode to hybrid or you could always go in and just automate something you know, like the gain. And when it gets to the middle, you could maybe have that like turn up a little bit. You could do something uh, like this, I'll show you. And yeah, let's get that to zero. You can maybe bring it up by about a dB and then just round it off. And what you're looking for then is like, you know, that perfect smooth transition, unless you want there to be like a big effect, like you want it to really get much quieter when it's in the center. And if that's the case, you can always go in and do this. And now you're also then going to be getting um, like a directional change. So it's going to sound like it's getting much quieter as it approaches the middle, or you can do the inverse and make it much louder as it comes to the middle. So that's totally up to you. Pan law, it's not something that's going to radically change the way you mix your music because you're always compensating for it when you're actually doing your mixing. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to explain it to you. All right, take it easy.